we on question number two now. Question number two. Let's see what the scenario is here. Here, remember, it's always a scenario. Always a scenario. Impact Security Services provides a number of security options for its clients, and that includes security guards for personal and business purposes, as well as monetary cash pickup. The company recently added computer and data security services, along with a product line of security equipment. Great. So they are a security services provider. They give security options and they give them security guards for personal and business use and they pick up cash. They added a computer and data security services. So now they have the ability to protect your data along with security equipment. Okay, so we understand the context and let's go. Following is an invoice that was sent to a customer from the sales department. All right, there's information on top here about the customer. There's a wood invoice. There is a nice layout. Look at CXC now, man. Put an effort into, into, the, into the thing. Somebody sat down and did this, you know. I'm so, I'm so proud of them. All right. Today, the wood processing feature that was used to create the invoice. Ooh, create the invoice. Interesting. Interesting. The following is an invoice that was sent to a customer from the sales department. Sent to a customer from the sales department. There's a, but, a bunch of lines in it. Had to be tables. It can't, it can't be anything other than a table. Now, the fact that it was sent to a customer and they have all the information about the customer here, all the information about the customer there, it is possible, and they have a name and address or something, it is possible that it could be a mail merge also. I would argue that mail merge is, is, is correct. I would, yeah. Yeah, I would argue that mail merge is correct, all right? Identify justification that has been applied to all monetary values. All monetary values, they are aligned to the right. So we put a line right. All right, that's cake. The company's logo is missing from the invoice. The logo is stored in a desktop folder on the sales manager's computer in the correct order. The steps that should be taken. I hate steps questions. Why? Why, why? Anyhow. In the correct order, the steps that should be taken to insert the logo to the right of the company's name. Click insert. Click the insert tab. Click the insert tab. Choose image. Locate the image on the desktop folder. Click insert at the correct location. Right. Now, the problem with these steps questions is that there are literally four or five ways you could enter image. Literally. You could just open up the folder and drag the image in. So you could say open folder, drag image. But that is not four marks. And that's my problem with these questions. The problem with these questions is that they, they, they asking you to give the steps for something, but some people using Microsoft Word, some people using Google Docs, some people using Open Office, and some people as do the drag and drop version, some people as do the menu version. When they marking these, I really not too sure what is going to happen. But I really just hope that they they kind of mark it with an understanding that there are many ways to do it. And I'm sure that many of y'all would put many ways to do it. And I hope you get your marks. If not, bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. Yeah, you could you could you could go in a in the file folder, press Ctrl C to copy, and then go in the any the document and then press Ctrl V and it into the image. There are, I tell you, there's like five maybe six ways depending on how you how you do it but I'm, I'm positive that they're looking for the click here choose this store it here all that kind of thing yeah so whatever once you explain it out and you 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 do it enough and a way that it will get your four marks you should be okay so really the coolest thing about these password videos is that i get to explain while doing a question so a lot of you would learn things that you never saw before just by me working on the question but sometimes i can't explain every single thing and i don't know you might need help explaining so three zero eight eight seven nine nine what's up that and find out what we have available. It might be a crash course, it might be a class. Remember when you join my classes, all of the classes are recorded. So you'll get to see every single thing that we did from the start of the syllabus. So if you're not sure about certain questions and you're not sure because the explanations I give in the past papers are a little too fast, then what's up the number? See what we can do for you. If not, hope you enjoy the videos and hope you learn a lot while you go through these past paper answers, right? Cool. Alright, the company's website was recently updated to include the new services and products available online. Two checks that should be carried out before publishing the website. Ooh, website, website question. 
But you have to answer the website question to the scenario so the website was updated to include the new services and products. So they should check for hyperlinks. Hyperlinks would be to ensure the items link to the correct pages on the internet or in the website. So you can check for hyperlinks and so they added new services and products. They'll do a check um check for spelling or yes spelling. Ensure the information about the services is spelled correctly. Um yeah. Now they didn't say anything about images, right? But they say services and products. So they might in they might have an insert uh, image or something. So um but they're asking you about our web, they're asking about publishing our website, they're not asking about um verification and validation. Clearly. So um do um do get catch there. You would probably yeah, you'll probably get mashed up if you put verification and validation because that's the thing about the context questions. This question is in the context of our website. Whereas as soon as you hear checks, you think verification and validation. If it was just um definitions then they'd be like yes definitions verification and validation those are the types of checks and whatnot but this is publishing a website and the scenario is it's literally saying they updated the website to include new services and products so all your answers have to be geared around okay if i put in new services and products what are the things i need to make sure takes place when i put in new services and products one the products are going to be hyperlinked two did I spell it properly or did I represent the data correctly? That kind of thing. That was um that was that was based on their context because they want publishing our website. This question is a little iffy. Um I, I, it'll be kind of interesting to see what are the things that they actually look for. Because the syllabus have about four things to check for when you do our website. So if you go out if you go out of what the syllabus teaches, <clears throat> you're fighting wild. Now, will they take will they take something that makes sense in my in my um humble experiences sometimes they don't take answers that make sense but they only like to see what is on the mark scheme but we could okay when customers hire impact security services for their computer and data security services the company does an audit to assess the areas of vulnerability and the possible threats so they want to they do vulnerability and possible threats that may occur define each of the following terms in relation to computer security and provide an example of each okay now <clears throat> they are giving people data security that's the topic that's being tested and they want to give you some sort of vulnerability a vulnerability is an opening opening in a computer system that can be exploited so example a phone with a weak password all right so anything that shows us that opening so weak passwords Weak something, open in this, something like that. Yeah. Um, so a phone a weak password as a vulnerability. A threat is um, something or someone or something. Someone or something that can take advantage of a vulnerability. So example, a hacker who cracks, who tries common passwords who tries common passwords. All right, so a threat could be a hacker, a threat could also be a virus, a threat could be a worm, a threat could be all kind of things, all kind of stuff could be a threat. But the point is, is someone or something that could take advantage of the vulnerability that you have, all right? So that would be a threat. All right, the company host webinars. Nice question, eh? This is a really, this is really testing students' knowledge. And I like that. I really, really like that to test in students' knowledge. And it's not just definitions and regurgitation. It makes, it makes IT a lot more practical. And when IT becomes practical, that's really what good and healthy in the real world, right? I the company host webinars on its website every month to discuss the different types of security threats and attacks the companies may be exposed to. State one example of each of the following security threats and attacks that may be discussed at the webinars. Okay, so we just want to give an example for each one. Okay, industrial espionage. Um, a worker, worker from a competing company coming to work and spy and spy on your business process. All right, industrial espionage is basically a spy. Espionage, spy, right? Um, somewhere like that. Denial of service attack. This is flooding 
a legitimate server with illegitimate requests to stop it from supplying real people. Yeah, and then our service attack is basically you shouting at the server so that it can't actually respond to people. It's almost like you have a um, you have a doubles vendor and a maxi with 100 people come out and start to order doubles and then all of them jump back in the maxi. The doubles man will spend all the time trying to make the 100 doubles for people who aren't actually real and the people who are actually real won't ever get their doubles because the doubles man was too focused on dealing with the fake requests, right? Alright, so flooding a legitimate server with illegitimate requests to stop it from supplying real people. Yeah. Ransomware, this is um, stealing data and charging a fee before it can be restored. Yeah, stealing data from a company. Yeah, so stealing data from a server and charging a fee before it can be restored. Basically, that's the concept. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ransomware, um, yeah. You can't really put like a paywall, um, yeah. Um, something I don't know. Mm. I feel like I'm writing too much for four mark, for oh, one mark each. I do um, if I were doing this question, I'd kind of stop and be like, nah, boy, something kind of wrong here. Let me read over the question. This is what you should do in an exam. Company hosts webinars on its website every month to discuss the different types of security threats and attacks that companies may be exposed to. State one example, one example of each of the following security threats and attacks. Alright, so they want one example. First one, a worker. Okay. Alright, yeah. Um, they want examples. So, I'm thinking that the, the, um, the thing that you should do is give them an example because that's what they ask for. Because it's four marks, all that explanation not really gonna be necessary. If it were like an eight mark question, then I think the explanation would be necessary. But now thinking about it, I think that they actually just want to get want you to put an example in. I mean, that is what I would ex expect. So a worker from a competing company coming to work on a spy on a website. Okay, cool. Then I also this attack not being able to access Netflix because the site is overburdened with requests. Yeah, right? So that's more like an example. Ransomware, um, getting a pop-up message saying pay 1 million Bitcoin to get your data back. Yeah, that, right, this, this sounds like a better answer, honestly. Yeah. Data theft would be like, um, data theft would be like, a company seeing their database hosted on the dark web for sale. That means the data was stolen and now being sold. Yeah. yeah. All right. So for the examples, you probably have a little leeway with the examples. Data theft could be anything like the, the anything they steal your data and you see that they stole it, or your your hard drive get wiped, or they take your flash drive. I don't know. It could be anything. So, for the examples, I think, I think you have a good shot at this paper, at this, at this question, if you just give examples of anything. But the examples have to be pertinent to the, what your understanding of this. So this is where they get cut to. I know get catch trying to explain, but I think, um, I think what they're trying to get you to do is just give an example, because it's just one mark for each one of them. So, give an example. There are two ways in which phishing messages can be sent. It can be sent by email, and it can be sent by text message. If you put WhatsApp, they will still, still fall on that text message, right? So, emails and text message. Alright, that's question two. Question two, yeah, question two had a little um, fumble spots. The fumble spots here would have been, what would you write for this part here, the website part? If I, if, I, if I think of anywhere that a student could fumble, you could fumble here on part B, and then you could fumble on the examples here, because the examples could be kind of weird. Depending on the example that you give, they may not give it, yeah. But everything else was good. So question two had some had some um, technicalities, and that's where you separate yourself now. If you could handle that, right? 